Thank you, Inwin and Taiwan Excellence, for making this video possible. What's up, everyone? My name is Ozzy, and I teach you guys how to save money when building computers. I understand how tough it is, especially right now, to build an affordable computer. So when I see things like this, I'm just like, why? One of my friends found this computer in his apartment complex's communal dumpster back in July. It was worth over $1,000 in its era. I want to fix it up, give it a new home, and learn some lessons along the way. I have one goal for this computer. Play Cyberpunk. The game needs no introduction. It's literally one of the most highly anticipated games ever. If this computer can play one of the most highly anticipated AAA blockbuster titles out there, I think something can be said about older computer hardware. Maybe not a lot or something good, but something can be said. I've seen some pretty beat up computers in my lifetime, but I definitely hit the jackpot with this machine. When I picked it up from my friend Steven's place, I saw a myriad of problems. The CPU cooler was hanging on by a thread. It was completely unscrewed in two out of the four mounting points and partially unscrewed in another. Lots of front panel headers and fans were also unplugged. Cable management was, well, there wasn't really any cable management going on. And it's sitting in a layer of dust, which I'm pretty sure is a breathing hazard. So I decided to name the computer Lazarus because he looks kind of dead. My friends actually found him in this condition, insinuating that the previous owners probably locked him away for a few years. He resurfaced a few months ago and they decided to chuck him out. This is all just a wild guess assumption based on the dust to hardware ratio we got going on here. Now I'm not saying this to ridicule the previous owners, but to paint a very realistic picture. Sometimes old yet capable hardware is thrown away or not properly recycled and it can still be giving new life. So I hope that this process of bringing Lazarus back to life will inspire you guys to maybe do the same with whatever you have laying around, even if it's not a computer for yourself, if you're gonna give it to someone else. So the next step is clearly to clean Lazarus up. The deep clean helped me see Lazarus' components clearly, and for a dumpster computer, they're not that bad. The computer rocks an i7-930, cooled by the obnoxious Cooler Master V8 cooler, which is missing a screw and has a bent mounting plate, by the way. Six gigs of DDR3 memory, an X58 motherboard from Gigabyte, and the crown jewel, a GTX 470. It's kind of funny because back in the day, this would classify as a high-end system probably a dream computer for a lot of different people. Lazarus could easily hit $1,000 in 2010 once accounted for inflation. It would be the equivalent of building a Ryzen 7 3700X and RTX 3070 computer today. But even by today's standards, this computer isn't that bad. We have four cores and eight threads that we can overclock to compensate for the lower IPC. We can also add more RAM. The motherboard supports up to 24 gigs, which is more than enough for every game out there. The biggest issue is the video card. I'm sure you guys have seen all the memes and jokes of the GTX 400 series. It was hot and it was loud. Now I won't dive into that, but that does limit the overclocking potential we can get on this card. On top of that, it only has one gig of VRAM, which would probably be an issue at 1080p. A decade later and the GTX 470 is equivalent to a GTX 750 or RX 550 from AMD. That's fine for light gaming, esports, some emulation, 
Cyberpunk is a whole different story. Thankfully, Nvidia gave Fermi the GTX 400 series an update that allows it to support DirectX 12. This means that even though we might be playing Cyberpunk at 10 FPS, we can at least run it. Anyway, let's see if Lazarus actually turns on. I'm kinda nervous about this. That's not good. So I won't lie, I kind of had a feeling that this would happen. So I started with the obvious, the power supply. Maybe it was dead or there was a short with one of the modular cables. So I tried an Antec 650 watt unit that I knew was working and nothing. So my mind immediately went to one of the less than pleasant cases, the motherboard. If you've troubleshooted broken computers before, you know that a bad motherboard is annoying to replace. But an enthusiast motherboard that's over a decade old is both annoying and costly to replace. I spent the next hour or so searching for affordable X58 motherboards that were local to me because this is a time sensitive project and I came up short. My luck is running dry. I felt down and like all hope was lost until I remembered something pretty important. So I've been searching all over looking for an X58 motherboard, but then I remembered I had this. <laughs> One of the reasons why I need to keep doing inventory so I know exactly what I have on stock. But Chris from Shop UCW, Upcycle Computer Works, he actually sent this to me as a gift. Like honestly, Chris, you're a lifesaver and I'm just happy that God reminded me that I have this on hand so I don't have to drop, what, like 150 bucks on X58 motherboards today. Feeling good. I tested out the Shop UCW combo and by the grace of God, we booted. Lazarus, you still have a chance. I assumed that the original Lazarus motherboard was broken, and so I transplanted the new one into the case, but something weird started happening. The power and reset buttons on the new motherboard were flashing, indicating that something is being shorted. Wait a second, does this mean that the case was the issue the entire time? So I placed a piece of cardboard between the motherboard and the case standoffs to see if those were causing the shorts, but I had the same issue. The power and reset buttons were still flashing. So at this point, I thought maybe it's the front panel connection. One by one, I pulled off each front panel connection, plugged in the power cable, and I found my culprit. This entire time, with the original motherboard and with this new motherboard, they weren't booting because of a single USB header cable coming from the case. This also means that we can use the original motherboard in Lazarus and we can also use the original case, just can't use one of the USB front header panels. So I wish this was the end of my troubleshooting woes, but oh no, it was just the beginning. For one, the CPU started overheating. The original cooler is missing some screws and the back plate is bent. So it wasn't making the best contact with the heat spreader on the processor. This caused a drastic change in temperatures. When I just put a few boxes on top of the heatsink to put more pressure on the processor, the temperature decreased significantly. Thankfully, I had some of these, which are copper shims, and placing this between the heatsink and the heat spreader decreased temperatures and at least made it usable for testing. So everything's good, right? I mean, we fixed the shorting issue on the motherboard. We have kind of fixed the overheating problem with the processor and the cooler. What else could go wrong? Little did Ozzy know, everything would go wrong. The video card started erroring, the classic Code 43 GPU error. Now this could be a software or driver problem, and just to confirm if it was or not, I plugged in my GTX 970 and it worked just fine. So this was a hardware problem with the card. So at this point, I have two options. I can buy a new video card, which will cost money, or I could try and fix the current video card, which wouldn't cost money. So I opted for the latter. So there is a baking trick where you put your GPU in the oven and you take it out and it's working. This simply implements a reflow technique that kind of reconnects some of the soldering issues 
on the board. Now, because I don't wanna poison myself, my house, or my family, I didn't put the GPU in the oven, but I used a standard hair dryer. So I set my hair dryer to the highest settings, I pointed it at the GPU die, and I stood there for about 15 minutes. It was a lot of fun. After that, I let it cool, I reassembled the video card, plugged it back into Lazarus, and this is what happened. No code 43, oh my gosh, it worked. At this point, Lazarus is functioning enough for us to actually get some testing done. Now with that being said, Lazarus does not really meet the minimum requirements for Cyberpunk. So I upgraded a few things. Firstly, we only had six gigs of RAM, so I threw in two four gig sticks that I bought for about 12 bucks. On top of that, I picked up a 120 gig SSD for about $20 brand new. Thankfully, we don't have to take a new motherboard or platform into account, so with all the upgrades right now, we're sitting at $32 for the computer. I overclocked the RAM to 1600 megahertz and left the CPU at stock because the CPU cooler was not cooling the i7 adequately. I ran some preliminary benchmarks to prep Lazarus for his big day. I started with Valorant, a 1080p with low settings, the system did pretty well, hitting over 100 FPS easily during a simple bot match. The frame graph shows lots of jumps and spikes, which I attest to the low clock speed on the CPU and the inevitable thermal throttling because it's hitting over 90 degrees. That cannot be good. Next I pulled up the forest. If I tried running the game at full screen, it would crash, but windowed mode worked great. At ultra low, it was definitely playable. Now the game didn't look as great as it could have been, but it did fairly well. And lastly, I ran GTA 5. This game is an odd one for me because it's relatively simple to run on normal, but tough to max out. I tried normal settings and was very surprised by the performance. Almost 100 FPS in some areas and consistently over 60. It performed no differently on Lazarus than a modern gaming machine. And now we're on to the big boy, Cyberpunk. So obviously Lazarus still has a few problems that don't make him the best candidate for Cyberpunk 2077. On top of that, he has an old school classic look to him, which can be fine, but to fit the aesthetic of Cyberpunk, I do wanna give him a few upgrades. Now we won't be upgrading any of the main specs, CPU, RAM, motherboard, and GPU, but we do want to give Lazarus a new look and also make him a little bit more reliable because 100 degrees celsius on the cpu not so good we're taking lazarus out of the dusty cooler master case that he's sitting in right now and putting him in the state of the art in win 309. the 309 really takes rgb to the next level. You thought you knew RGB before, you haven't seen the 309. The front panel alone has 144 addressable RGB LEDs that you can actually change the frequency and lighting of using InWin's Glow 2 software. It also comes with 12 built-in lighting modes in case I'm feeling a little bit uninspired and don't wanna figure something out myself. On top of that, the case comes with four pre-installed fans and has lots of space for radiators, top, bottom, and rear in case we want to water cool Lazarus in the future. The case is so unique that it actually won the Taiwan Excellence Award this year, which is one of the highest recognitions you can get as a hardware company. Anyone has over 40 products that have won the award and the 309 got crowned this year, which is pretty cool. Inwin also sent over a brand new power supply, which is awesome considering that our previous unit is about a decade old and some fans to help tie in the entire look. So with that being said, this was Lazarus when we first got him. This is Lazarus now. Lazarus looks pretty good in the 309. Now I did change out the CPU cooler with the stock one because the V8 led to thermal throttling. With the stock cooler, I was able to hit 3.78 gigahertz on the CPU. And it's a pretty good bump over the stock 2.9 if you ask me. All right, let's finally answer the question, will it run Cyberpunk? I got on the PC, pressed play in Cyberpunk, 
and surprise, surprise, there's an error. I do not get paid enough for this. I threw in an old GTX 750 Ti to see if it was the card or the drivers, and shocker, the GTX 470 is the culprit. I have to look more into this, but it seems like the 470 did not have the proper hardware instructions necessary to run a DirectX 12.1 title. I started with 720p at the lowest in-game settings, and it gave me a, well, let's just call it a cinematic experience. If someone is coming from console, this isn't too bad, but if they're coming from PC gaming where 60 FPS is the target, this could be considered awful. I was fine with it, but it's totally not ideal. The saddest part is, it can really only get worse from here. I bumped up the resolution to 1600 by 900. The graphics looked noticeably better, but performance dropped considerably. At 720p, we generally stayed in the upper mid 20s, but at 900p, we saw the mid to upper teens, and that's definitely unplayable. And finally, 1080p. Although it looked pretty, it was a glorified slideshow. There is absolutely no way Lazarus could hit 30 FPS with this current graphic solution. It just seems like a pipe dream. But for some reason, I was still very determined. I came in here with a goal, and I'm going to hit it, even if it means I have to lower my standards to the absolute bottom of the barrel. So I changed the resolution to 1024 by 768, lowered the in-game resolution to 50%, and guess what? We can finally play Cyberpunk 2077 at over 30 FPS consistently. I'm so proud of you, Lazarus. Who cares if there are only 10 pixels on screen? Because curiosity got the best of me and I often like to see computer hardware suffer, I play the game at 1080p using ultra settings. And I don't know why, but it was just hilarious to see. It felt like I was in this weird dream limbo state. The motion blur added an extra layer of humor because it reminded me of that blurry Mr. Krabs meme, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, I did want to see how well the i7-930 could hold its own, so I threw the GTX 970 in the system and Lazarus did well with it. The 930 stayed under 50% utilization and the 970 was pegged at 100%. At low settings, we stayed above 30 easily, and even on Ultra, we had that cinematic experience in a few places. Not bad. <sighs> One week of troubleshooting and building and repairing later, Lazarus, he's finally here. And I've learned a lot, so let's talk. <laughs> Firstly, there does come a point where you just need to let go of older hardware, and I think the GTX 470 is a good example of this. Although I got the card functional, I wouldn't call it usable for modern games, bar eSport titles. I do regret spending a lot of time on this card, because I could have put that time towards buying a better video card locally, but I do like that I learned more about the reflow technique, and it was successful, so I'll probably use it in the future. And although some computer components age poorly, some don't age that poorly, and CPUs are a great example. Now, I don't recommend going out to buy a decade-old processor, but if you just want 60 FPS gaming, old i7s and Xeons will give you exactly that. Technically, it did run Cyberpunk, and it was able to play the game after we did a few upgrades, but it's not advertisable as cyberpunk ready. And now the only reason I say this is because time and time again, sellers online and locally will advertise their computer components or their computers as X game ready or as a gaming PC, and they're just not. A lot of those systems can barely hit 30 FPS with respectable settings, and at that point, I would call that false advertising. Now with all of that being said, I am happy that I was able to take such a broken and busted computer, clean it up, and upgrade it to where it's viable for at least some things. I unfortunately exceeded the $32 budget limit that I was initially planning for by about $66 when I take into account the CPU cooler and adding the GTX 750 Ti. Now $98 for a computer that can actually run some games is not bad by any means, but if I put my energy towards looking for local deals, I probably could have lowered that price by a good chunk. At the end of the day, I think I'll give Lazarus a few more incremental upgrades and then I'll give them to someone 
who would actually use him properly, someone who doesn't have a computer. So if you guys like this video, then leave a like. If you guys loved it, share and subscribe. I wanna thank you again, Inwin, for sending over that beautiful case, the power supply and the fans. Show them some love on social media, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.